what up? It's Benjamin D'Souza here, the Yautuan Emperor, back with another vid. There's a lot of things going on in these YouTube streets, this uh, Black Manosphereian streets, if you will, that I want to speak on. But uh, I want to preface this by saying that, you know, I'm making this video with kind of a, uh, a heavy heart because, and I'll just be real with you, y'all know I like to share some of, my, some of my personal life, you know, because hopefully me sharing my personal life, I can help a brother who's going through a similar thing get through what he's going through if he's going through a similar situation you know so my uh my baby mama <laughs> tried to facetime called me today while i was mobilizing probably about two hours ago or so and she left a message with my daughter leaving a message that's funny my daughter speaks so well and, and this is after how long has it been it's going on two years since she let me see my daughter and I and I might I might do a whole video talking about that. Talking about the whole, you know, going in depth of the whole baby mama complex, aka the xenomorph hive, if you will. And and its various tactics to try to keep its drones in line. But for, but for time constraints purposes, she kept my daughter away from me for going on two years. And now she's calling, trying to FaceTime me, have my daughter leaving messages and whatnot. <laughs> and she's speaking so well and, and you know what this I'm gonna get I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get on top of it but just, just just let me go to church on you one time not not even church but just let me let, let me just let me just put my my heart on it let me wear my heart on the sleeve for one time my daughter was probably about eight, nine months, eight, nine months old, no, yeah, 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 this is before her first birthday, before her first birthday, and I was getting my daughter every weekend, every weekend, you know, I had a routine, we, we do our thing, you know, well, first, probably about a couple months after, you know, the pregnancy, the paternity was confirmed due to her um, slinging her panties over her head like goddamn Petey Pablo from that song in the early 2000s. North Carolina, this bitch was like, thotting it up, take my panties off, wave them over my head, twist like a helicopter ass bitch. You know what I'm saying? So that's that. So after paternity was confirmed, you know, and, and we got the permanent plan via the great state of Missouri. <laughs> after we got that permanent plan situation straight, straightened out, you feel me? So I was getting there every weekend, not every other weekend, every weekend, you feel me? So I had the whole, you know, so, I, so I'm asking her early on, you know, uh, so what time does she go to sleep? 
What times does she eat? What time does she take her nap? Woo wham, woo wham. She like, eh, you know, she she was she was just being totally, you know, combative. You know how these bitches do. They gotta challenge you and test you on every motherfucking thing. Everything. They gotta challenge you on everything. You tell a, a bitch ask you what your favorite color is. You tell them my favorite color is teal. Your favorite color ain't teal. Teal ain't a color because teal is green and blue combined. Like, bitch, I just told you it's teal. But no, the base colors on the color wheel you see is red, blue, yellow. Uh, you feel what I'm saying? Now, orange is a subculture. It's a sub uh, color. Just of red and yellow just like how teal is a sub color of of green and blue so it's really not a color as you see it's a sub color so what is your favorite color bitch i just told you my favorite color is teal god damn it green and blue blue big faces and green small faces what more like Tyree says, what more do you want from me? Anyway, I'm. <laughs> so, you know, she she give me this, that. She, you know, she give me her bottom lip talking about she go to sleep when she want to go to sleep. I'm like, all right, whatever. So, you know, I had to learn this shit on the fly. You know, I guess that was her little way of trying to punish me because I didn't sign that birth because I wasn't there for the uh, for the child birth and I ain't signed a birth certificate. You know, because shit, bitch, you ain't you ain't about to have me on the hook like that. Fuck, I look like. You feel me? <laughs> I might have been dumb enough to nut up in your ass, but goddamn, I ain't dumb enough to just surrender like that. You feel me? After knowing what I know, like I know you fucking out other niggas. Like, come on, man. Now, if you go through my catalog, you'll see how the state of Missouri establishes excuse me, establishes paternity. So I had to take said measures. It's kind of fucked up, but it is what it is. But anyway, so, you know, it took me about a couple weekends, man, to uh, get a get a routine down and shit. And, you know, one of my routines when I got a routine with my daughter on Sunday before I go ahead and, you know, Sunday evening or Sunday afternoon, sometime during Sunday when I took when I took her back to her mama and Sunday evening and shit, I would sit down with her. I had like a stack of books, Little Mermaid, you know, Fox and the Hound, Lion King, Aladdin, whatever. You, you know them little children books, Disney little children books and shit, right? I would sit her down and read them to her. And I would have to wrestle with her ass sometimes to to keep her sat down. She'd get up and get to move around and can on and whatnot. So, I, you know, I figured out a little system to where on Friday... I give her one of them little uh, dumb dumb suckers. Probably sometime after her first nap, and after her lunch, I give her a dumb dumb sucker, and she, you know she get a little sugar rush, and you know she would enjoy that candy. So she will remember that come Sunday. Sunday came around. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna give you this sucker if you sit down and read this book. Now, I got to the point I had to kind of use a Pavlovian method on my daughter to where I wouldn't give her a candy every time we had to read. It just got to the point after a while, I would say, hey, we about to read a book. And automatically, her mouth would start watering like, oh, I'm about to get some candy. But I wouldn't give her some candy. And it came to a point where she would go and get a book and bring it to me and say, read it, read it. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. That's some, I know it's wrong that I'm using 
advanced psychology methods on my own daughter to try to help her mental acuity, but you got you got to look at the bigger picture. So I'm doing this with my daughter, right? And you know, months into this shit, my daughter come over. She's walking around. I got little mini jungle gyms in the living room that she can climb up and slide down. Bouncies, all kind of toys. She running around playing. All of a sudden, she's saying, out of nowhere, shit, fuck, damn. And I'm like, what? Come here. Come here. What'd you say? Shit. Now, I know I'm not doing this around her. So, I, at the drop spot, I, I confront her mother. And I calmly ask her, Yo, little girl is saying this, that, and the third. She's saying, fuck shit, damn. I'm not saying it. What's up with that? This... This is this is this was her mother's response. I shit you not. She going what's the big deal? She going to hear it anyway. <laughs> I'm like I'm like, you know what, bitch? You you like that you like that hot heated argument type of dirty sex type of Shit, and I'm not even about to get that to you. We passed that moment right now. So, all right, whatever. Okay. She come to me the next week talking about, yeah, uh, some of her daycare, uh, some of the workers at the daycare is complaining because, you know, baby girl is saying, is walking around saying cuss words. And I just, I just reared back and, and just gave that bitch the gas face like, nah, for real, you don't say, huh? I just brought this to your attention a week prior, and then you had nothing but vitriol. You got the fangs out on me. It took some, some dyke bitches is working down at a roach-infested hood uh, goddamn uh, daycare that's this, this using this using a fucking non-profit hustle uh, federal grant money it took them bitches to tell you for it to sink in but the nigga who actually got 23 alleles in the game oh that, that shit don't sink in though them bitches down there ain't got no genetic fucking investment in this child but, you, but it, it sink in when they tell you that shit but when a nigga who got who who's paying goddamn them, you know, I ain't about to tell y'all what I'm paying them up for child mama. I'm to tell you, <laughs> nigga, I'm coming up out of pocket for my child, and I invested my genetic makeup in my child, and you ain't got. All right, I'm I'm not I'm not about to go down that road, Siri. Redirect the route, but I, but I say that to say, you know, I'm 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 making this video with a heavy heart because just hearing my daughter and the manner in which she was speaking to me on that voicemail, it really, it really, it really uh brought it home because you know the little time that I had with her, the the, the little year that I had with her and whatnot. The impact that I had on her. And I had to fight and wrestle with her ass to some days to get her to read. You know, I really took time out. Because my father told me the reason why he was why he became so astute and so acute mentally is because his mother, my grandmother, made him and all of his siblings read. And he, and she would make them read a, a page out of a book, one page out of out of a book, all of them, all all seven of my grandmother's children. She would sit them down after every day, 
and they would all have to read a page. Sometimes each of them would read two and three pages. You know, it got to, you know, she was reading to them, and then it got to a point where they learned how to read, and then they start, then they had to read to her. You know what I mean? She started out reading to them, then it got to a point they had to read to her. You know what I mean? And when my father dropped that on me, I just tried to, you know, incorporate that with my daughter to the best of my abilities. And it's and it's paying off. You know. And her mental acuity is just but you know, the brothers out there that's going through it, y'all know what it is, man. But anyway, what the first order of business, brothers been knowing that, you know, I've been in the comment section, I've made videos, video responses in the past about this particular subject, I want to throw my hat in the ring once again about this, this whole polygamy joint. Shout out to the old man. He is a true, uh, how you say, I want to say a, a founding father. If, uh, if this whole black manosphere was to uh, transform into, let's say, a country, he will be a forefather. He will be like, I wouldn't say he's George Washington, but he would, he would probably be like Thomas Jefferson or something. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that's a good analogy, a metaphor or whatever, but you know, he he would he would be like a for, nigga. He would be on Mount Rushmore of the Black Manosphere. I got that. I, I I didn't come up with that. Donovan Sharp came up with Mount Nigamore. And I'm kind of, you know, saying the black uh, Mount Rushmore of the Manosphere. So I, I didn't come up with that. You know, Donovan Sharp came up with that. You know, if you, if you want to go over there and check his shit out. I know I don't speak much about him, but he's, he's come with some heavy shit, you know. So if you're into what he's kicking, I advise you to go over there. But yeah, I didn't come up with that Mount Rushmore analogy. He came up with that. But in any event, the polygamy piece, I would have to say, I'm going to go ahead and say it, as far as the black community is concerned. There, there is various degrees air up in here there's various degrees of polygamy going on and it's coming from both sides it's coming from the female and the male side of the spectrum now I do agree with Ali Emmett when she says that you know this you know, when, when, when she's expounding upon Umar Johnson and, um, you know, Shaharazad Ali, when they say, you know, motherfuckers is being polygamous anyway, we might as well, you know, make some rules to it. It's kind of like, it's akin to, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of a metaphor. Boxing, it's like boxing, right? Now, if you ever read the book, How to Box Like the Pros by Joe Frazier, he, he goes through an entire uh, history about boxing and how in the early chapters and how when boxing first started out, it was really like, it was really like the fight club. Like they used to, 
have mud pits and motherfuckers would have boots with spikes on them and shit. And then, you know, anything went. It was just about beating your opponent's ass. So if you got your opponent down and you stomped on his ass and you had spikes on your fucking boot and, you know, you punctured his ass up with your spikes, then that that was allowed. But as, you know, as time progressed, the rules came into play like no kicking, no, you know, hitting while down, you know, then gloves came into play, yada, yada, yada. You know, it... it Boxing grew from this, from this really this this backyard brawl type of event into a mega million dollar um, industry, a billion dollar, not even mega million, billion dollar. Like we we talking about in the billions, nigga. You go down to Mandalay Bay in Vegas, you get two marquee fighters and they go to Vegas. Shit. You talk. You talking at least, at least, depending on who's fighting. You talking about three, four, five hundred million dollars moving through that city in one night, in one night. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I view polygamy. I view polygamy as we see it currently. I view it as how boxing was back in the, uh, I, I can't remember the dates, but back in the early, 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 early phases of boxing back in England, where it was just niggas in the backyard just throwing hands and stomping motherfuckers and shit, you know what I'm saying? And then it was like, hold up, hold up now. He was a very good fighter until he got caught slipping with a straight, and then he fell on the ground, and his opponent you know, stomped him in his left eye with, with the cleats on it and then goddamn blinded him. Now, this man can't make a living anymore because he's blind in one eye. And he was a really good fighter. And he was bringing it, you know, motherfuckers was betting on the fight and shit. They was betting on him to win and shit. Now they can't bet on him anymore because shit, he, he can't even fight anymore. Now, I'm going on kind of a tangent. Let me, let me reel it in. But you get what I'm saying. If, if you would do your research on early boxing, on the history, the early history of boxing, you was, and how it transformed into what it is today, I'm using that as a metaphor in comparison to how polygamy is today and what I believe it could transform into. I believe how it is across the pond in countries like Africa, the Middle East, I mean, not countries, excuse me, scratch, 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 continents like Africa, because I know, I, I, I know I'm going to have a motherfucker here like, nigga, Africa ain't a country, shut your bitch ass up, nigga, you know what the fuck I'm talking about, <laughs> but no, uh, like continents of Africa, Middle East, some parts of Asia, yada, 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 this, that, and the third. Now, what we have going on today is more of a Wild West form of polygamy. There's no structure to it at all. It's like, nigga, meet me in, on Main Street at high noon, and we're going to have it out. Because that's basically what it is. Because if you've dealt with any um, inner city chicks who've had or who have baby daddies, you know that it's a real threat that, you know, of violence. Just fucking them. They not even with the nigga. But if the nigga catch wind that you fucking his baby mama... That shit can be a problem. That what's that one movie? Prime example. Prime example. Straight out of Philly. Uh, Paper Soldiers with the boy uh, Kevin Hart in uh in Beans. Beanie Siegel. Yes. That the character that Beanie Siegel played. 
he might be an exaggerated version of what a hood baby daddy is. That that character may be a tad bit exaggerated, but there are some nuggets and elements of truth to that character's archetype without a shadow of a doubt. Every I don't give a fuck what part of the town you come from, whether you come from the inner city, the projects, the suburbs, the quasi-burbs, the outskirts, another county over, where, wherever you come from, you already know if you're dealing with a hood bitch that got kids and and you catch wind of what her baby daddy is on, you already know that could be a potential problem. In one shape, form, or fashion. So it's already... A uh, de facto polygamous relationship because he's already treating his baby mama or baby mamas like um, like 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 wives. You know what I mean? Now there is a dual polygamy deal going on within the black community. And I was really disappointed. I'm not going to say I was disappointed, but this wasn't brought up in the uh, polygamy podcast that the old man brought up, but I'm going to go ahead and bring it up right here. Excuse me, one moment, please. The issue being that a lot of these females practice polygamy. Oh, yeah. And they're not practicing polygamy in a sense that they're a part of, uh, they're, they're beholden to one man. No. They're practicing polygamy, as, you know, they're practicing polygamy as in they're the centerpiece and other men, as in their baby daddies and side niggas, are beholden to them. And then the shit gets murky when you have a chick who has multiple kids by multiple baby daddies and she got her separate baby daddies beholden to her but she's beholden to one other baby daddy like it's it's a cluster fuck of just outright dysfunction and fuckery yeah 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 but you got chicks out here who who go out here for the uh the sole purpose to get knocked up by different men so they can get different attributes from different men and to lock down how you say I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't necessarily call these gentlemen beta male orbiters in this sense but they're uh, they're essentially orbiting this planet if they choose to orbit this planet you know, they might not view themselves as a satellite, so they say, I ain't orbiting this bitch. This bitch got three, four other niggas that, that are her baby daddies. Them niggas can orbit her, but I'm my own motherfucking planet. You know what I'm saying? But the shit gets murky when children get involved. Now, flip side of that that that's with as it pertains to this whole baby mama complex deal when i say the baby mama complex i do have to i do have to bring in the men 
because there is a grain of truth when it comes to the statement that these females make when they say, it takes two to make a baby. There is some truth to that. There is an element of truth to that because you have a lot of these niggas, and I'm just gonna say niggas out here trying to create their own harems. And they're not and they're not using, you know, their um how you say industrialness to be able to take care of multiple women. You know, they're not using their uh intrepid uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Enterpriseness. Is that a word? Who knows? You know what the fuck I'm saying. But niggas, uh, niggas building an enterprise and he's on his enterpriseness shit, then yeah, all right, you get it. They're not using their enterpriseness, <laughs> enterpriseness, <laughs> to build this harem. This is how they built their, this is how these men are building their harem. They're using swag, rep, and dick game. And when they get, when they get to that motherfucking precipice, they do lock these bitches down by knocking them up on purpose. On purpose. And I've heard. I've heard many of women say this shit over the years. And they'll just glance over this shit. They'll say it in passing. They're like, you know niggas do uh, set chicks up too. You know that, right? There is some truth to that. There's some truth. So I, I can't let the brothers off the hook on this. I'm not going to say brothers. I'm just going to say other males of my same species I can't let them off the hook on this cause it's a lot of niggas that are running and I, I use at the, as a prime example the motherfuckers over there and, and, two, and two niggas down there in Memphis it was two of them that had like 30 some odd kids a piece and what's funny about this shit, it's really not funny. This is some real life shit. One of the niggas is from the town that my mother is from. And I got several female cousins that still, young female cousins that still stay down there in that town. And when I found out that that nigga is, has a club, like he operates out the same town that my mother grew up in. It's like right outside of Memphis on the Arkansas side. And I called one of my cousins up when she got pregnant and I asked her, I said, hey, is this that nigga? What, whoop wham, whoop wham? And he go by a certain nickname. What's a T-Y-B, take your bitch. He go by that nickname. And she was like, no, nah, I don't fuck with T-Y-B. It ain't him. <laughs> she kind of laughed it off because she already know what, what's going on down there. You know what I'm saying? So it's niggas is like creating stupid harems by going around and purposely just busting crazy nuts up in bitches like this. So I'm so so when females say it takes two to make a baby, I can kind of I kind of gotta you know nod my head and be like, all right, I see where you're coming from, but at you know. But at the same time, it's this it's this tug of war going on between the genders because you got females who are trying to create their own little personal uh, male harems and then you got the males who are trying to create their little personal female harems and then there's overlap of the two because you have this chick, like I said prior in this video, you got this chick, she got four kids, three baby daddies, two of the baby daddies are her little, is, is her harem, 
or three of her baby daddies is her harem, but the fourth baby daddy is like the nigga who she's a part of his harem. So the so the three baby daddies who are orbiting around her and cutting her grass and changing her oil and you know shoveling her driveway, they ain't getting the pussy. But they just doing shit for her. But the fourth baby daddy, that nigga's getting the pussy and that nigga's getting the cooked meals and that nigga's getting, you know, extra perks and shit. So it's like a it's it's like a it's like a sing it's like a it's like a bastard baby making pyramid factory. You know what I'm saying? So most definitely there is polygamy needs to be enforced and it needs to be enforced uh, if not legally it needs to be enforced socially like you know there 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 there, there may be certain laws on the books and there may be certain laws that are not on the books there may be certain laws on the books that are enforced and there may be certain laws on the books that are not enforced and there's certain laws that's off the books that are not enforced and there's certain laws on the that are not on the books that are, that are enforced. You know what I'm saying? This situation right here, whether there is legal legislation as it pertains to this shit or not, this shit needs to be enforced. It needs to be corralled because it's going on. It's the it's the wild west. It's the wild west of polygamy. Like this shit's going on regardless. And this shit is going, you know, shit's crazy. Really is. But a um, couple of the brothers during the old man's podcast made a couple of um, powerful statements and whatnot. I want to shout out um, King Sigma. He came with some some very very sound uh, data as far as it pertains to the violence in said country where there's legal prostitution and uh, legal polygamy. But um, he, he did kind of upset me during the, during, the, uh, during the podcast because he was, he was really coming for old girl Nick, you know, when, when, when he was asking her, well, do you have a problem with, with, with brothers going to other countries and, and getting women. And she stated, no, I don't have a problem with you going to other country and, and getting a wife, but I do have a problem with sex tourism. And he, he re-asked the question like three times, and I'm in the chat like, bro, she didn't already answer that shit. Let that shit go. I'm like, by this time, you, you badgering the witness. You know what I'm saying? And I can, And then, you know, other motherfuckers was... You know, I can understand that she was getting tight because she clearly had answered that question already. But he was just, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what he was trying to hear, but she had said it. I guess he, I guess he wanted her to say, well, I don't have a problem with you going down to other countries to, for sex tourism. Hey, listen, bro, if, if, you know, she already said, listen, this is her stance. If she, if if you want to go to another country to get a wife, she ain't got no problem with that as long as you, you know, make it official. This, that, and the third. But she do have a problem with you just going down there to fuck. If that's how she feel, then you know y'all can agree to disagree, go separate ways. But he just kept like picking on this. You know, he just kept picking at that scab. You feel me? And she was getting irritated. And then motherfuckers in the chat was jumping on her neck like, 
Oh, uh, she getting tight. I'm like, nah, nigga. She, she, I'm getting tight because this nigga's asking her the same question like three, four times. And I'm like, nigga, she not already answered that shit already. So go ahead and let that shit go. Y- y'all can agree to disagree. Now, if you want to go down to the DR and just fuck bitches for the sake of fucking bitches, that's your problem. I mean, that's your issue. That's what you want to do. If she got a problem with it, then, hey, that's on her. It ain't going to stop you, right? All right, then. You know what I mean? But, yeah, he did He did come with some, some sound info on there. He did come with some sound info. And then, you know, he did catch, he, he, he was he was on this shit, though, when uh when he was catching that uh, that exploit shit. You know, and that, that dovetails into what I was just saying earlier because she had made a statement that, you know, a lot of these females, um, when they can't exploit a man, they, they, they move... They move to different, different demographics of men to exploit, to get, to satisfy whatever need that they need at that time. You feel what I'm saying? So when they in their early 20s, late teens, early 20s and whatnot, they're exploiting a certain dem- demographic of men that can, you know, satisfy their ego at that time. Whether it's the D boy, Ray Ray and Pookie, whatever. Well, you know, if she's young and dumb and full of cum and she's looking for danger, she's gonna look for a certain demographic that's gonna, you know, fulfill her naivete, her need for danger, and her sex drive. You feel me? Then when she gets into her latter 20s, early 30s, mid 30s, She's looking for a brother who can satisfy, you know, her uh, provision and protection needs and whatnot. So she's looking to exploit different demographics of of men. You know what I mean? And, you know, he caught that. And it, like I said, like I said, you know, we all trying to exploit each other. It's a it's a business exchange. You feel me? At the end of, at the end of the day. You know, if I'm fucking with a bitch, I'm looking for goods and services. I'm paying for goods and services. Those goods are hot cooked meals, you know, uh, domestic um, duties around the house and children. I view my children as goods. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Services. I need my penis washed. The royal penis is clean, your highness. Do with that as you will. (laughs) Services. I need a demure, uh, congenial attitude. Me no bak chat me, say. Me no bak chat me, say. None of that. I get home from a long 14-hour shift. I don't want to hear shit about I left the goddamn toilet seat up last night. I I wish a bitch would. I'm just coming home from a 12, 8, 12, 14-hour shift, and you talking about me leaving the goddamn toilet seat up? Mmm. But that, that boy, Jack, boy, you you about you about got that goddamn <laughs> that Ryu Ken tornado kick. Fuck you, mean bitch? Don't be hollering at me about that shit. That's a, a simple solution. You put the goddamn seat down. Fuck you, mean. Yeah, goods and services. That's what I'm paying for. That is what I'm paying for. If your services are subpar, then your services are no longer needed. If you produce subpar goods, take it how you want to. But I said this shit back in 2016, and I'm living by this shit. I'm running my motherfucking life like a Fortune 500 company. 
I'm trying to stay in the black. And if I need to make cuts to make the bottom line, I'm making fucking cuts. A la Obsidian. I'm making cuts. Because I'm winning. I don't give a fuck what it costs. You feel me? I'm going to win. I don't give a fuck what a bitch say. And I don't give a fuck when air nigga got to say on top of that. I'm going to win. Now, if you want to get down with a winning team, I'm going to tell you what you got to do. If you ain't down to do that, or if you ain't, you know, you come to me and you supposed to be a receiver and you want to get on my team, but you running a 4-6 and you 5-3, like, bitch, we ain't looking for no five foot three, four six receivers? You feel me? Shit, if you 5'3", you better be running a sub 4 three forty. You better be able to be like a little Tyreek Hill, a little burner down the field. Let me get back on track, though. And then tonight, I might get back to that, though. This whole polygamy thing. Because it, it's, it's a whole... Like I said, the baby mama industrial, it's a whole industrial complex, man. Because you got niggas who know that it's a ceiling, that if they're making enough, if, if they're making said amount of money, if there's a ceiling to what they make, they know, listen, depending on what state you in, the state ain't going to take all your chips. It's basically depending on what you make. Let's say you making. Let me just throw a, a raggedy ass number out there. Let me just say you you making fifteen hundred a month. You get a baby, right? You gonna get put on for what? Five, maybe six hundred a month, right? For child support. If you turn around. And have a and have two more babies. They gonna take the child support out of that six hundred that you already making. So it's going so six so so the six hundred dollars that's your child support. The more babies that you have, them bitches, you know. So it kind of incentivizes some of these niggas to kind of oh now that I think about this shit. Because you would think, damn, why this nigga just keep having babies? It just dawned on me. Some of these niggas be trying to put pressure on their baby mama. Now, if you just got one baby mama and she getting $600 a month on your ass, you feel me? She she good, you know what I mean? She, look, she cool with, with the 600 right? But if you get two baby mamas and they both put you on child support and that initial child support get cut in half and now the first baby mama getting 300 and the second baby mama getting 300, (laughs) you feel me? Like, you see where that shit going? (laughs) And then if you take it a step further and get another baby mama... Now, all three of the baby mamas is getting 200 a piece. Now, the first baby mama, she didn't went from getting 600 a month to 200 a month. Oh, shit. That's when the pressure getting on now. Because the first baby mama got accustomed to living a lifestyle. Of having an, an additional... 200 uh 600 a month flowing into the household so now her shit then got cut by two thirds pardon the pun you punk ass niggas two thirds you niggas is two thirds kicking that fuck shit but yeah though 
That that's gonna that's gonna put pressure on her. And some niggas be trying to put pressure on their baby mama like that. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna I ain't gonna speak too much on it, but um I gotta I gotta mm, I don't even know I should say that fuck it, I'ma say it. I got some It's somebody that I know That Is probably Some years older than me This person has Well at the time He had three kids By one woman He had the first kid Then he knocked her up again Then he knocked her up again And he was doing some extra shit Like some street shit Like some real Like he was really really leaning on this bitch And she And she finally just caved in And gave him custody of all three of his kids You know what I'm saying But this nigga was on some You know back in the day this nigga was on some grimy shit So you know he had the muscle And like this nigga's a bona fide savage Like (laughs) You know what I'm saying (laughs) <laughs> like like this nigga had like he had the muscle to do this shit. But you know, he put pressure on this bitch and this bitch folded. So I don't know. This is just a theory. I don't have enough evidence to form a thesis behind this, but it's just my theory from my observation of this whole baby I'm I'm coining it baby mama industrial complex, but really you know, you can't have a baby mama without a baby daddy that goes without saying. So the men have a, they have a significant role to play in this whole uh, matrix that is the baby mama industrial complex. But, um, yeah, I do have to say, some of these niggas do be uh, knocking up multiple bitches to split up that child support pie. To put pressure on these baby mamas And these baby mamas Be getting knocked up by multiple niggas So they can have more motherfucking hands To do different various jobs This bitch might get knocked up You know The bitch might get knocked up by A a college educated motherfucker Right Then get turned around and get knocked up by A mechanic that works at Firestone so she can get her car fixed and shit. Then she might fuck around and get knocked up by a goddamn... <gasps> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> by a D-boy. So she can get the plug on, on, on some weed. Then she might fuck around and get knocked up by... Um, shit, I don't know. Name it. Whatever the bitch's vice is. Or whatever she thinks she needs or she wants. She'll get knocked up by a nigga... Just to keep that nigga around so he can fulfill that same task. So it's like insane, insane for the niggas. The niggas will knock up different bitches. You know, they, you know, she'll knock. He, you know, he might knock up a lawyer bitch, especially if he a D boy, because he want to keep this bitch around because she can give him legal counsel. Then he might fuck around and and, and you know knock up another bitch because she's the first cousin of the plug. So. You know, the, the plug, you know, even if he run off on that nigga a couple of times, you know, the plug ain't going to knock him off because his cousin going to be in the, in the way. And then, you know, he might knock up another bitch that work for the city. You know, she might work downtown, work for the uh, the power company so he can get like this council on his power bill. Like, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? This is like it's it's polygamy polygyny, whatever the fuck you want to call it, whether it's bitches having, whether it's a bitch having multiple niggas sticking multiple dicks up in her, or whether it's a nigga having multiple bitches sticking dick up in them, whatever you want to call that, Um, you feel me, that shit's going on both sides, so there, there, there needs to be some structure to this shit. Because as far as I see it, this is like 1700s boxing. This is like 1800s boxing. It's it's fucking no holds barred. It's like like backyard wrestling. Like, really, like, you niggas don't even have paramedics 
on foul and, and you're jumping off the roof, you know, goddamn dropping a fucking macho man Randy Savage elbow through a nigga sternum through a goddamn flimsy ass table that you picked up on, on the side of a dumpster in the back of a Walmart. Like, what the fuck are you doing? It's the, it's the Wild West. It's the Wild West. It's the Wild West of Maiden, man. And as far as I can see it, it's the black, as far as the black man is concerned, nigga, this is how the West is fucking won. You call me goddamn the wide up of this shit. You see me at high noon if you want to, motherfucker. But yeah, though, I really want to get onto this, uh, hold on. Trying to do my shit off of off of my cell phone. Let me go ahead. My shit blink. About to go out.
Chido. This whole accountability thing, man. This whole uh, excuses. And what really, really inspired me to make this video is that I got into a social media exchange with several women about this excuse making ting. And it was, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, I don't give a fuck. It was a, a group that I'm part of on this social media platform. And it was a picture. I'm not gonna say the caption to the picture. The picture speaks a thousand words, so I only have to read the caption. But it's a picture of two women with two young children. And they were both dressed alike. Now it was assumed that both of these women were, I mean, both of these children were boys, and it was found out later that they weren't. Who gives a shit? The shit was still inappropriate. The picture on the left showed a uh, young boy or a quote unquote young girl in the same outfit as her mother with, the, with her hand on her fucking hip and her goddamn ass poked out. You know, the quintessential, stereotypical, hood rat, internet thought. You know, with her hand on her hip and her ass poked out, and, and that one leg with with the with the with the hand on the hip on it, you know they 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 got the calf poked up and shit. That that picture. This little girl wasn't nothing but what two three years old, and she got her hand on her hip with a fucking ass poked out. That's like these videos that I see of these little girls twerking. And these mothers that are influenced these little boys to twerk? Are you fucking kidding me? Other picture. Young lady with a body. Same fucking thing. They're dressed alike. And the boy's doing the same. He, he, he's posturing himself just like his mother. And when the picture's taken, He's looking at his mother and examining her posture so he can emulate and imitate her posture. And that's why I had to say about it. That's why I initially said it. And this, and, and, and this is where the excuses came into play. I said, this is a fucking disgrace. Those females and females like them should be ashamed of themselves. An absolute disgrace. And a lot of females in this comment section have, have nothing to say about this whoredom. Oh no, 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 excuse me. About this whorish, ho, no, that's not what I said. Horrendous, I, I did a pun. I meant this, you know, I put the W in front of the of horrendous so it'd be horrendous horrendous display of motherhood but they uh but they got the single capes but but they got the capes but they got the capes out for single mothers though let me read that because i kind of butchered that i don't know i think i was i was, I was mad when i wrote it let me repeat that. This is a fucking disgrace. Those females and females like them should be ashamed of themselves. Absolute disgrace. And a lot of females in the comments section have nothing to say about this horrendous display of motherhood. But they got the capes out for single mothers, though. But this is where the excuses come in. Next comment. This is why these boys really need kings in their life. 
us as women can raise boys, men can raise them, but when it comes to teaching them how to become men, we just can't only, we just, oh, we just can't, only men can. So right there, she didn't really hold the females to the fire, she initially said, we need the men to step in, we need the men. But she needs to be calling that shit out. She needs to be called. But the comment after that, and I got into exchange with this same bitch. And this is what this bitch gotta say. But you left and made her a single black mother. Is it just me? Now, this, now at this point, this is when I started to turn green and I and I started to bust out my clothes. Let me let me repeat that comment that this bitch had to say. But you left Oh, hold on. But you left and made her a single black mother. Is it just me? No, bitch, it's not just you. Because I've said in many of videos of past, I had no fucking choice but to leave. Was I gonna stay and deal with this bitch who had her panties in her hand, waving around her head like a helicopter? PD Pop Ho, North Carolina? No, I wasn't doing that. And I gave this bitch ample chances to get her shit straight. For the sake of my daughter, like I said in prior videos, the only reason I found out that, that she was pregnant is because I caught her cheating. I caught her out on it, and I said, all right, it's over. Then she told me it is, that she's pregnant. I said, all right, let's get back together. Then I think about the ramifications of what's going on and, and, and really the responsibility that I got. I said, all right, let's get married. And she said, no, she didn't want to get married. I said, all right, well, cool. Well, let's just play it out like this. A month later, she cheated on me again. So, am I at fault for leaving? Am I at fault? Okay. Should, should I sit up here and, and continue to be cuckolded by my baby mama? Let's continue. <laughs> uh, then this other chick. I don't know who she was talking to. But, uh, I assume she wasn't talking to me. She, I mean, she ain't tagged me in the shit, so I'm just gonna assume she wasn't talking to me. But she was talking to somebody, but she said, out of pocket nigga. Let me just repeat that and let that sink in. This is, this is a black woman talking, uh, talking to you, black man. This is how she talking to you. Out of pocket nigga. You have to be a vicious dick, uh, yeah, vicious dickhead if you think a black woman raises her son to be soft. Nigga, this shit is unheard of. Man of man are this enforcing of such nature comes only from deviant males or female deviants. Don't, don't downgrade my sisters with your bullshit, pussy. Let me read that again because it was kind of hard to follow. Out of pocket, nigga. You have to be a vicious dickhead if you think black women raises her son to be soft. Nigga, this is unheard of. Man on man. Oh, this is a dude. Man on man. Are the enforcing of such natures come only from deviant males? Or female deviants? Don't, don't downgrade my sisters with your boy. This, this, it's the final frontier, my, my gentlemen, my fellas. This is the final frontier. This nigga right here. 
this is going this is where the west is going to be won when you come across these simps you engage them with extreme prejudice you understand me extreme prejudice you show them no mercy you let them know blood will hit the ground you cross a certain line blood will hit the ground my next comment and what's so stupid is these boys are gonna grow up and their female peers are gonna be saying all these niggas are bitch made all these niggas are gay they all weak man i'm going down to my father's country in south america to get my wife i can't deal with this level of fuckery if you was perusing this comment section you would see so many excuses is it excuse a reply to my comment gay black men gay black men may be gay but never bitch made a weak you can't compare them to weak ass heterosexuals let me repeat that this is this is a female saying that gay black men may be gay but never bitch made or weak you can't compare them to weak ass heterosexuals so either this is an uh blt elemental p sympathizer or this is just some bat shit female saying this so gay black men can never be weak okay all right then i say this this i i asked he she whatever the fuck it was yeah, whatever you say. Is what those women doing in those, to those sons, is that appropriate? More dodging, more dodging. I, you, you, you get my point. This video is going on hella long, so I'm about to go ahead and cut it short. But I think I got another one. I do. Do got another one. <laughs> Not even going to go into that. But, yeah. And as far as the Serena Williams piece is concerned, her tantrum, her fit, because I believe that she knew she was going to lose. She knew she was going to lose. You know, if you've ever played basketball, boxed, football, and let's say you played on the D-line or you was a DB, whatever position you played, if you had to go head up with a certain opponent of yours, let's say you were a DB, right? And you go out there and you line up right against the receiver this receiver routes you up like he really breaks you down and, and routes you but the ball don't go to him on that play it go to somebody else next play he routes you up again, and he make a catch and, and get about seven yards on you. And he's easily, like, shaking you up. You can't get out your brake fast enough to react to where he's going. So by the first, so by the fourth, fifth time this goes on, what you do? You chuck and shivvy this motherfucker in his ribs with your elbow try to knock some wind out of him so when he get out of his break you know what I'm saying 
and he might get open, but shit, you done knocked the wind out of him real quick. Even if he catch that ball, he ain't gonna get too far with it. You start doing dirty shit, or like in boxing. Prime example, the uh, Holyfield Mike Tyson fight. Holyfield Tyson fight. Tyson knew he wasn't gonna win. He knew he wasn't gonna win. So what did he say? Oh, this nigga was headbutting me. So now I'm about to bite his ear. That right there, what I seen in that um, in that U.S. Open junk with Serena, Serena Hulk smash, as, as the old man put it, that was the equivalent to the uh, Tyson ear bite. But tennis isn't a contact sport like that. But I believe that uh, if it was a contact sport like boxing, MMA, or something like that, I believe Serena would have bit that bitch. <laughs> she, did, she did something dirty, bro. Kind of like, um, nah, I ain't gonna use that example. But yeah. I ain't going to use that Ronda Rousey example during the weigh-in. That, that, that's WWE shit. I'm talking about in the, you know, when uh, Ronda Rousey, like, batted that bitch, backhanded that bitch across the face during the weigh-in. I ain't about to use that example because that's, that's, that's promo shit. You know, plenty of, plenty of boxers that did that shit. I'm talking about in the heat of battle, like, with, when you battling with a motherfucker just lose your cool like that 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 shit was equivalent to the Mike Tyson ear bite for real if, if, if uh, Naomi and Serena were boxing shit. Serena bit the shit out that bitch on everything I'm saying ah oh, shit hold on real quick I gotta touch on this I gotta t it just came to mind Me, uh, brother Info hopped on the panel. See, he he he, <laughs> he really stepped in. <laughs> he really got thrown into the lion's den on that one because old man was in rare form, bro. Old man was just letting him have it, bro. I was like, God damn. <laughs> but uh bad media kept kept asking this brother like you know you doing this you being a uh community act well i'm not gonna say activist but being a community volunteer to help these brothers uh do this that and the third you're really enabling these sisters to uh, continue in, in the bad behavior that they're doing because I've, I've heard this out of black women's mouths and the mouths of my own family members they know these women they know they go out with no regard get knocked up by some, how they say, ain't shit ass nigga, because they know that they have brothers, they have uncles, they have after school programs, they have little league football, basketball, baseball, wrestling coaches, they have, uh, uh, volunteers and employees and, and, and uh, youth programs and whatnot that will step in and fill the job and fill and, and do the duties that the child's father should have done. 
they already know this this is like i said the baby mama industrial complex is a well oiled machine they've had damn near five fucking decades to master this shit they have this shit down to a fucking art they got it down to an art okay girl i know if i get knocked up by this nigga i know he ain't got no job he's still selling eight balls he ain't moved up to a key yet but shit, he keep my refrigerator full with food. And he keep my hair and my nails did. And he got Pirellis on his motherfucking rod with some 26s. Shit, bitch, I'm about to stun on these bitches riding in his shit. Shit, it's, it's still a plethora of niggas down at the Boys and Girls Club. Or down at the YMCA that'll teach little man man how to play football. And shit, you know he, and you know his baby daddy tall girl. So if, and so if he, so if he get to six two, and, and 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 he got football skills, girl, shit, I'm about to be getting that NBA money, girl. I'm about to get that NFL money, girl. They got this shit down to a science. They got it down to a science. So yes, brother, information you. You are enabling them. You are enabling them. Because as long as they know that there are various men out there who are not the father of their child raise their child up and teach them male traits and whatnot certain things that you learn in organized sports and whatnot you teach them that they don't need a man what they need a man for I got a de facto man in the uh, one of the volunteers at the at the YMCA down the street. Let me just send my son to an after school program. I pay what? I don't know how much it costs for a YMCA pass, a monthly pass. I'm, I'm guessing thirty dollars a month. Okay, let me take the six. Let me take the six hundred dollars from my baby daddy, it's, and instead of taking him on, and have him be the masculine uh, guiding light in the household. I'm just gonna take the six hundred dollars from him, use that money to go towards thirty dollars a month for the boys and girls club, send his child to the boys and girls club, and let some other nigga. You know, instill, instill manhood lessons. You are enabling the fuck shit. You, you take, you cut off all these avenues that, and they have nowhere to go. Then they'll have nowhere to go but to the man. And if the man ain't shit, lesson learned for the women coming behind them to not deal with a man who ain't shit or if you get a man who's about something you hold on to him and you cultivate the skills the domestic skills that you need to hold on to him Because I'm a case in point. I didn't leave. I was effectively ran off. 